Today on another chilling episode of Real Ghost Stories Online, when a young woman has a vivid dream about a funeral at the old church next door, she finds it hard to simply wake up from and forget. What was it about the dream? What was it about the funeral in that dream? And was it a message or warning about the upcoming passing of a loved one? That story and more, today on this terrifying episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is, and uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. We would absolutely love to hear them. Of course, you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person, an EPP. You can do it with your Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash realghoststories, or our website. Same contents over there as well, ghostpodcast.com. Is where you go to sign up for that. Five bucks a month gets you access to the bonus episodes. Now more than 400 bonus episodes there for you to binge away on. Uh, There's also, of course, the advanced episodes, the archive. It's the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. All of it's commercial free. Binge away now. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Todd with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? I was just kind of thinking I had something else I was going to talk about, but as you're going through and you're describing all this content people can uh, can get, mm-hmm. I'm thinking like at some point it's going to be like Casey Kasem, you die, and yet you never truly die because somebody picks up the ball and they use your content for the rest of their lives and just make money off your work. Her name is Harper. <laughs> <laughs> And that's her plan. <laughs> well, at least she's got one. But yeah, I was just thinking about that. You know, you, you still hear all these Casey Kasem shows on weekends and oh, yeah. on satellite radio and all that kind of stuff. It's like there will always be, you know, all yeah. this content that you've created over the years someplace. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm finding more and more creative ways of continuing to use it, too. Um, I just over on um, like here on Real Ghost Stories online on the feed. We have a Real Ghost Stories Online Extra every single day now. Uh, On top of the normal podcast, there's this extra piece. It's about five, ten minutes or so. And it's just a phone call from the archive because we literally have thousands of phone calls in our archive that just sit there. And I'll tell you what, I listen to them. I don't remember them because my memory is like that. But these are phone calls from like 2015, 2014, 2016 that I've saved over the years. But it's like, well, why? Why just let these sit, you know, because the, the shows have already aired They're They're so far back in the archive. Let's revive some of this stuff. So I started doing that. And over on the Grave Talks this last week, or by the time this airs, it's been a couple weeks now. We're doing the same thing over there where it's uh, it's a, we're airing an old phone call every day, uh, but we're packaging it up. Um, uh, as calling it grave confessions and opening up a phone line over there, too, so people can share their stories currently and their news stories. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just it's amazing, you know, how many places and what we can do with all this stuff. And what I think it would be really interesting, I don't have the ability or the time to do it. But if someone ever uh could do like animations with some of the stories like yeah. like a little you know that again not my my forte but who knows you know maybe i'll have a grandkid someday that's like doing that with the stuff but it'll be interesting just to um <laughs> you're, you're like harper get busy yeah i'm like uh, I, I'm, I'm already figuring out ways to employ the people that don't exist yet of like <laughs> Someday we need a person for this and we need a person for that. So you better damn well have children. This is the conversations we have over like McDonald's. You know, it's not like that's perfect. Perfect go, parenting. Go to the ball pit or go play in the, the play thing. It's like, no, you're needing to have children someday so we can continue the empire. <laughs> uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories online to share your real ghost stories with us let's go to our first story it says hello my name is uh, silvestru i'm from romania i've told uh, i have some stories i could tell but the one that marked me the most happened after my mother passed away she died in a house fire and the night before that i had a dream we lived right next to a church and in my dream i was in our yard could hear the bells of the church like they do at a funeral 
So I ran in the street and saw a deacon and asked him, who died? He looked at me confused and asked, haven't you heard? Like I was supposed to know who died. That morning, I tell my mom about the dream. She told me that someone that some big event is going to happen in my life. That day around 11 a.m., the house caught on fire and my mother, well, the ceiling fell on her head and that's that. So after that whole thing with the funeral and whatnot, my dad and my brothers and sisters, six in total, moved in another house. But that one had only one room. The rest was under construction. We didn't even have a bathroom. We'd go to the neighbors so we could shower. But we did have a sink and a refrigerator, and that's important to the story. We all slept in that one big room, and one night on my couch, as I was sleeping on the couch, I was struggling to fall asleep. As I was standing there late in the night, everyone is asleep. By then, I start hearing the sound of water dripping. I was thinking to myself, is it the sink? Is it the fridge? I didn't want to get up to see what it could be. And not because I was scared, but because I was a lazy teenager. After some time passed, the dripping started to annoy me. And I was like, screw it. I'm going to check it out. As I was about to get out of my couch, I stopped in a sitting position Right there was a cat on our table drinking milk out of a cup because we drank almost every night. Someone left a cup of milk on the table and now a cat was drinking out of it. Okay, nothing weird. Only the fact that we didn't own a cat and neither of our neighbors did and our home was locked and there was no way a cat could enter our home. So anyway, I see it's a cat making the noise. So I figure I would throw something at her to make it stop and maybe go away so I could sleep. Didn't find anything. So I said aloud to the cat to fuck off. The cat, calm, took her head up out of the cup, looked at me, and I swear to this day, she said to me, if that is what you want, I will go and left. Remember, the house is locked. She has no way in or out. And I'm left there in horror. Couldn't even move until the sun came out. People still don't believe me to this day. And honestly, it's hard to believe myself when I think back to it. Hope you read my story. If anyone wants, I got a few more. Thank you very much for what you're doing. It's amazing. Love you guys. Thank you. So, the cat's obliging to the order, but speaking clear English. That's uh, that's quite a cat. It's really crazy. And 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 why a cat? You know, why not some other animal? Um, the first thing that came to my mind was: Is the story going to turn into? a uh, path about how the cat, you know, was his mom or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. it's just it very, very strange. Yeah. I mean, um, to, and to have that dream and then the person who warns you and says something significant is going to happen to you <sighs> and it happens that day. How sad is that? Like, I know. What a horrible, horrible way to lose your parents. I would almost say that, you know, something, you know, obviously significant was going to happen to her. And I mean, it's interesting that, that she could sense something was going to happen to him, but didn't seem to have the uh, the feeling that, that something was going to happen to her as well. Right. Right. But, yeah. Very, uh, very interesting. And when, when they talk about, you know, the cat talking and things of that nature, I, I think sometimes we think it's, you know, almost like uh, like hocus pocus. I, I'm, I'm going to think it's more so in lines, honestly, of just like the cat didn't verbally speak out loud. It was more of a. I guess, telepathic type thing. Like they heard the message back and forth. Right. We weren't actually seeing the mouth move necessarily. We were just understanding what was the the message that was being sent, which is uh, still interesting either way you look at it. Although, you know, if you had a cat like on Hocus Pocus, that would be kind of cool. I'd want to see the mouth move. I think that would be really kind of (laughs) fun. I think that would make it better. Uh, 855-853-4802, our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to another letter. It says, hey, guys, love the show. I listen every day, and I'm excited to to be able to tell you my story. Firstly, I suppose I've always been a bit uh, perceptive to the other side. As a bit of backstory, I should mention that I had an experience as an infant. One day when my mother thought I was asleep in my crib, she decided to come in and check up on me. She told me that when she entered the room that held my crib, I was standing up, clenching the bars, babbling to someone or something. When she asked me in her baby voice who I was talking to, I apparently responded with the words, Lar. She brushed it off and decided it was just a baby being a baby. A few days after, she was on the phone with her mother-in-law, who was my grandmother, and she told the story, giggling about how silly it was, and my grandmother fell silent. My mother became increasingly worried. 
My grandmother told her that the word Lars was what they used to call my late aunt in secret. This aunt had passed before my birth, and my grandmother said there was no one that knew they called her that nickname besides her and my grandfather. But that's not why I'm writing you. Here's my story of focus. I had a best friend that passed on in 2012 due to breast cancer who I firmly believe is still here with us. In 2014, as a college student living with my parents and working, I'm generally in a two-story old home by myself as both parents work fairly late every night. One Monday, I was wasting an hour on the computer in the office in the house before getting ready for my afternoon work shift when I was startled by the sudden sound of a music box playing. At first, I froze out of fear, but then I got up to investigate. When I followed the sound, I was led to my parents' bedroom. As a wedding present, my mom had received an old Victorian wedding music box from one of her old and feeble aunts. She didn't care much for it, so she had piled boxes of jewelry and a stuffed camel on top of it on her dresser. When I entered the room, however, the boxes of jewelry and the camel were neatly stacked on my parents' bed, and the lid of music box was open and spewing the distinct melody. I quickly closed the lid and decided to go into work a little early. When I rushed into my own bedroom to grab my car keys and my purse, my late friend's favorite ring was sitting on the floor in the middle of the room. I knew I had left it on the ring stand on the bedside table, I felt a bit better, though, because if it was her, I knew that I wasn't in any danger. I was startled again, though, by the next sound that I heard. In my room, I have a large double closet that has thick wooden fold-out doors that are extremely old. First, there were three banging noises, and I watched as the doors of the closet shook a bit. Then it was silent for a few moments. Gathering a bit of courage, I took one step closer to them. Then the next sound came. The sound was eerie, like something crawling from the inside of the closet three times, as if trying to escape. I knew then that it wasn't her, and it was a trick. She was a kind soul who would never scare me like that. I grabbed my keys and purse and hurriedly ran downstairs to my car. On my way out, I noticed a black shadowy figure in the bathroom doorway, but paid no attention to it, as I was scared and in a hurry. When I was safely in my car, I called my mom and told her what had happened. She and my dad got home before my work shift ended. When I got home, she asked me why I put my friend's ring on their bed. I told her that I didn't do that, that I had left, in the middle of the, I left it in the middle of the floor in my room. To this day, I have no idea what it was or where it came from, but I know that it's most definitely not friendly. I haven't seen or heard anything from it recently, so I'm hoping that it found someone better to torment. Thanks again for giving me this chance to tell my story and for providing such an amazing podcast thoughts on all that wow i mean i think just the uh the music box itself uh showing up not piled with all that stuff on top of it opened and playing mm -hmm. i mean uh i'd get out of there as fast as possible too i probably wouldn't even notice that the ring had been moved yeah um and as soon as the closet door started shaking man i'd been down the street period are music boxes ever peaceful sounding to anyone? Because as a child, I remember hearing music boxes and thinking they were creepy. <laughs> and I don't know if movies and stuff like that have done that to us. Yeah. Or I, I think it's interesting. There is a new, um, well, nah, it's kind of new. It's a tool that uh, instrument that uh, paranormal investigators take out. Uh huh. And it's actually, it's, it is, it is a music box that can be cranked. And so, um, it can be done with electricity. It can be done with a crank and pe they use it now to determine whether or not maybe something's trying to communicate with them. So as with a K2 meter or a flashlight, if you turn this thing on, it will go off and it's in the, it's in the shape of a coffin Oh God! and it's got a little crank on it, but it also runs on batteries. So possibly the energy can turn it on and turn it off, but it's this creepy music box sound. It's like, I don't need an instrument to creep me out if there's yeah. something haunting a place, you know? Uh, I had a um, a music box. It was a little like wind up and it just turned in a circle and it played uh, like jingle bells or something. And I remember it was on my shelf high above where I couldn't reach it as a kid. And I remember my parents, when I was really little, used to like crank it up for me before I went to bed and then they would play as I fell asleep. Um, it, but then it just, you know, as I got older, it's just still sat on this shelf. And I remember several times in like teenage years, this thing is dusty as heck. It hasn't been touched. It hasn't been cranked. 
there'd be some times where I'd be in my room and all of a sudden you'd hear like a couple chimes of the music box. And then it stopped. And I don't know if that was just, you know, the the springs on it wearing, uh, you know, over time, having just sit there for or sat there forever um, or what. But that was always very, I don't know, kind of unsettling. Just those those couple of notes. And you, you, it happened so quick. You had to take a moment to go. Did I was that the music box? <laughs> and then it wouldn't do it for months or years again. And then it would just do it at random. I don't know. It's um, I wonder if I still have. I don't know. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go to a caller. Hi. Hi, Tony. Hi, Carol. Uh, This is Jess from South Carolina. I've tried to record a couple times, so if you get this multiple times, I'm so sorry. Um, But... Um, anyways, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I love your show. I'm a long-time listener. Um, and I wanted to tell you a story about my sister's first um, house. Uh, so this is actually uh, while she was in um, school, she decided to move into a house off campus with a group of her, of her friends. Um, and... Um, a long story, so I don't know if maybe this is too long for a recording and I need to write it in, uh, but we'll give it one last try and then um, try to write it in if this doesn't work. But um, I have always been sensitive to energy. Um, it's not something I embrace. It's not something that I necessarily like, uh, but basically if um, something has happened in an area, um, negative usually, uh, I tend to feel it physically. Um, it's just something that's always happened. I've kind of also always been, uh, I wouldn't say open to spirit, but I've always known they exist. I've never questioned it. Uh, one of my earliest memories was lying in my bed uh, while a lady kind of floated around out my second story bedroom window. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of always been with me. Uh, it's not something I like, not something I want to develop or anything. It's just there. But um, anyway, so uh, my sister, going back to her, um, this was a time where things were going really great for me personally and um, for her as well. She was um, really happy. She was super a super bubbly person, very extroverted. She had a ton of friends um, and just was really kind of enjoying her, you know, young adulthood. Um, um, but she was also very focused on school. But, um, but anyways, uh, so this house was about half an hour outside of her uh, college. It was not uh, super far away. I was also about half an hour from me, which um, was like the opposite direction. Um, I had a lot of her things at my house. Um, so she had invited me to come and see her new house, and um, I thought I would go ahead and bring um, a box of her things as well, or as much as I could fit in my car. Um, so I packed up a bunch of her stuff to take to her. I thought it would be helpful for her. Um, um, And as I started on my way, uh, immediately I realized this was not going to be just a regular drive to my sister's brand new awesome house that she was super excited about. Um, The air around me thickened the closer that I got to this house. Um, There was also some strange uh, light things, I guess. I don't really know how to describe it other than, you know, it was a really bright, sunny day outside, and I could see that it was a really bright, sunny day, but the closer that I drove to this place, the darker um, it looked. And I know that sounds crazy, and I know it sounds weird, but it was almost like I could see a film, like like the energy of where I was going was just darker than the rest of, or well, than reality, I guess. Um, and then I think maybe I was just sensing it. I obviously wasn't, well, it looked dark, but I could also, like, I also knew it was just 
bright and sunny outside. Um, so anyways, when I uh, get close, uh, almost right before I turn onto the street where this house is located, I um, have what I can only describe as a panic attack. It was, um, it was difficult to breathe. My heart started palpating. Um, I don't get panic attacks. I didn't get panic attacks. It wasn't something normal for me. Um, but I did. It was, it was, um, it was very, it was very difficult. It was hard to breathe. It was very hard to, um, drive. I actually ended up having to pull off on the side of the road, um, and take some breaths and try to calm down. My senses were like on overload. I just kept feeling this gut-wrenching sadness, like like being hit in the gut over and over again with this terrible, terrible sadness. It was, it was despair. It was despair. Um, and it was, it was horrible. Um, after I got it together and um, turned onto the street, you know, the, the air continued to be thick. The darkness continued to kind of also sicken, and that sadness just lingered. It did not go away. Um, the strange thing about this house is it was it was a, a nice brick house, uh, an older home, but not super old, uh, but it kind of shared a driveway with a church, which was right next door to it. Now, this wasn't an old church. It was a modern era church. There was no... Um, cemetery, there was no graveyard, just a big open um, field type thing. But the, um, the her driveway and the church's driveway kind of shared the beginning and then they split off from each other. Um, so I, I say that because it was just strange because you could feel the energy of the church as like this, but it was like black and white or, uh, you know, light and darkness. It, it was just the feeling um, from the driveway was so polarizing um, that I could feel it was very strange. So I end up um, parking the car and needing to take a little bit more time to kind of get myself together because I really did not want to get out of the car. Like, I didn't want to look at the house. I didn't want to step foot on the property. I did not want to be there. I did not, uh, which was really sad because um, my sister was very excited about this house. This was, you know, a whole new thing for her, um, and I wanted to be really happy for her, but I just, it it was so hard. Um, She, well, I ended up getting out of the car, um, and she had asked me to come through the back. Um, This place had this uh, really beautiful, actually, backyard. Um, It was a fenced-in yard. I went through the gate on the side of the house, and um, the whole back part of the house was um, half of it was this big sunroom that had open windows, um, all the things that you would assume to be very light and airy and, and put a whole lot of light into the house was there. Uh, a big sliding glass door was where the um, it, 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 this sunroom kind of ended and it um, opened onto this um, small little porch with steps that you um, that led into the backyard. I, I get onto the steps and I don't even get to the sliding glass door and immediately I collapse. It was like a like a freight train that hit me. It was just like powerfully I was standing, and then, boom, I was just on the ground. It was just, like, I I didn't even know what had happened. It happened so fast. Um, I wasn't physically injured, but that's what it felt like, like this, like a freight train had just knocked me over. Um, my sister's box went. Uh, a lot of her things uh, kind of fell all over the place. Um, my sister obviously heard me fall and ran through the sliding glass door out the back to make sure I was okay. Um, As she's helping me up, she keeps asking me, what's wrong? What's wrong? Are you okay? What happened? Why are you crying? I didn't even realize I was crying. I didn't realize I wasn't, I didn't feel anything physically. I didn't feel like I was injured, 
but I was. I was in tears, um, and I didn't realize that until she said something about it. And when she said it, I realized, oh, my gosh, I am definitely crying. There were tears coming down my face. That was also very strange for me. I'm not someone that gets overly emotional um, a lot at all. It's not something that's just in my nature. Um, so it alarmed my sister. And the only thing is that I could get out of my mouth, the only sentence or words I could form was what happened here. And it kind of took her aback. And she took a minute and then looked at me, really looked at me, and realized I was having an energy thing. Something was wrong. You know, this is my sister. She grew up with me. She knew, she knows my history. She knows, you know, I'm not exactly uh, normal, I guess. <laughs> um, and she told me, well, you know, this place was owned by an older lady and she passed away suddenly. So maybe that's kind of what's going on. You think that's what's going on? And I just agreed with her. Yeah, that's probably what's going on. It's probably uh, just maybe her family sadness that I'm feeling. I don't know. Um, or maybe I'm just coming down with something and, this, you know, ladies' energy is also there. I don't know. I tried to play it off. Um, I didn't want to ruin her moment. This was a moment for her. So I, you know, I picked everything up. I did not go into the house. I couldn't make myself do it. Um, as thick as the energy was on the porch, um, in the background, like looking at her being framed in the back by the sunroom, which I could physically see like there was lots of light in the house, but that film was there and it was so thick in the house. It was just so dark. And you know, I'm, I'm really, really sorry that I didn't say more, but I did tell her that she needed to be careful. Um, I did tell her that she needed to be careful and to make sure, you know, she watched out that there was sad energy there. Um, so, uh, I end up leaving. Uh, I did not go in the house. I told her I would come back another And that's where it cuts up. Darn it. Yeah. That's where she ends it. So, with what we're working with there, thoughts. From what I'm listening to, it sounds like the classic story of someone who's sensitive or who has abilities and they're feeling things they don't quite understand. You know, they're getting they're getting messages or emotions that they don't have answers for. Mm -hmm. And obviously she'd grown up with this for a while. So she understood that something was off. What she describes on the trip and at the house with that film over what she was seeing, mm -hmm. I've heard many, many times from many people. And I also believe that when you're going to a location and you are a sensitive and you have those abilities, sometimes the energy where you're going knows ahead of time that you're coming. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, uh, I've heard many reports of mediums and psychics on their way to a location and whatever typically is there ends up showing up prior to their arrival. So it is possible, I think, that what she was seeing on the way to the trip was already with her in the car on the trip there. Something not good? Something... Well, it certainly doesn't... I mean, she has to trust her own emotions and her feelings and, yeah. and whatever she's got going on. If she feels like something's not good, if her vision is impaired whether it's physically impaired or it's psychically impaired, it sounds like something good wasn't going on there. I would love to know the rest of the story. What else happened here? Mm -hmm. um, and if there's any background that they figured out about the old lady and how it may have, you know, pertain to the church and all that kind of stuff. Because you, you listen to a story like that and your mind starts wandering. Oh, something happened. Somebody from the church came over and something bad happened at yep. the house, you know? Yeah, yeah. So... 
Uh, good news. I've uh, I've extended uh, the length now going forward <laughs> on what people can because uh, it, it's been sitting at 12 minutes for the last, I don't know, seven years. Um, and it usually, you know, there was a mechanism to keep things, you know, a little more brief and to the point. But every once in a while you get those and it's like, no, um, but it's up to 20 minutes now. So if you can't get the story out in 20 minutes, sorry. Uh, but I think that should cover most stories. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would love to hear the other, uh, the other half of that. Wow. I'm so. just, I'm really excited about hearing. I hope she calls back with yeah. the rest of it. Yeah, I am too. Thank you for uh, writing in and sharing that. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. Online.